So the takeaway from specialmaths.c is that when the compiler happens to see some special math that it knows can be computed in that form that is like the base plus index time scale plus displacement that we learned about in the RMX form, then it can actually do that math using an LEA instead of doing the individual adds and multiplies. Also a couple little miscellaneous things in case you missed it. So there is a push RBX at the beginning of the function and there is a pop RBX at the end of the function. So what kind of saving of registers do we think that is? Well, I'll ask you in a quiz question in a second. Also, you might notice that there is only a sub hex 20 instead of 28. That probably has to do with the fact that there's this push RBX, which means that in total, the call the return address that's pushed onto the stack ends up getting balanced by this push RBX so that the compiler sees it as 16 byte aligned. So that's just another little interesting bit there. All right, so we've picked up yet another assembly instruction, LEA, and this one happens to be one of the larger 5% slices of this pie. And at this point, we can go back to the hello world and we should actually be able to fully read this assembly at this point. So what's going on in hello world? Well, there's the sub RSP28, which we know is the combination of both stack alignment padding after the return address and the hex 20 for the shadow store area. Then there's an LEA taking something and putting it into RCX. Well, what is the something likely to be in the context of a printf? It's probably the string, but let's go ahead and confirm that now using our disassembly and debugger. So go ahead and set hello world as your startup project. Start your debugger go to the disassembly and let's go ahead and take a look at that memory location. So I've turned off symbols here so you, you don't see this listed as printf, you don't see this listed with all that other weird stuff. If you had the symbol names you'd see what we see before but let's turn it off for a second so we can just see what the actual assembly instruction is. So sub RSP28, let's go ahead and put our stack on 8 byte size RSP automatically uh, following along. Then let's step into that instruction and RSP got moved by hex 28. Then this next instruction, what's going to happen with LEA? Well, it's not going to use the square brackets to go to memory. It's just going to literally take this value and move it into RCX. But we came over here to the debugger to see what is that value. So let's go ahead and step over this so that we can confirm that yes, it does put that exact value into RCX. And then let's put RCX into our memory window. And what is that, that memory address? Well, it looks like it's actually the ASCII string, hello world. And why is it going into RCX? Well, we learned from our calling conventions that Visual Studio puts the first argument to a function into RCX. So RCX now holds a pointer to a string, hello world, which will be passed into the call to printf. So let's go ahead and step over that call to printf. And we would see over here in our executable, it prints out hello world as expected. And then moving one, two, three, four to EAX, why EAX? Because by convention, EAX or RAX is the place where you return the return value from a C function. So step over that, and there we go, one, two, three, four in RAX. And finally, balancing out the subtraction of 28 from the stack, we have to add back in 28 to the stack. So do that and let's look at the stack and what we expect to see in a return instruction is the address of some code that we're going to return to. This specifically is the code that called main. So there we go, hello world, just a few ins instructions but it takes us quite a while to understand exactly what all is going on here in terms of calling conventions, stack padding, Microsoft Shadow Store, different argument, different registers that are used to pass back return values versus parameters and all of that good stuff. So congratulations, you now understand Hello World.